Hello everybody, welcome, so great to see you today. Isn't this a beautiful, glorious day? And this place is just magnificent. Here I am at Bonelli Park in Diamond Bar. Yes, this lake is so beautiful. I just had to make a video for all of you today. I was thinking, if somebody was to ask you a question, what would you tell yourself in your younger days? What do you think that question may be? If you were to give a little golden nugget or an advice to your younger self, well, I gave it some thought and my answer would be, I wish I knew more of who I was as a person, my identity and how valued and cherished and loved I am as an individual, a person. And sometimes some of us in this world, we try to look for outside validation. The culture we live in, they tell us we need to do this. We need to gain more of that. We have to climb up the corporate ladder, achieve this, that's, and get approval of friends and our families. And it is pretty exhausting when you really think about it that we use up so much of our time and energy wasted on things that can be meaningless in some sense, but not looking internally within. And today in this video, I hope and pray that you may be aligned in God's spirit and know that you are a majestic and sovereign human being. God created this whole world. Isn't this beautiful? The nature, the mountains, the skies, the birds, the waters, the lakes. And he especially created us, each and every one of us, his children. And we have so much worth and value in God's eyes. We are so significant. And I'd like to share with you a scripture that it says in Psalms, and it says, I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well. So we are so perfect in God's eyes. Yes, indeed. But the culture, the society seems to really make us be fixated on our imperfections. And that's why we can never strive to be good enough or to be perfect in the eyes of others or the world. Sometimes we need so much money, we feel like, but how much money will be satisfying to you? You keep wanting more and more. Or whatever jobs or careers or whatever it may be, how many friends you may gain, it can never be enough. But God sees you as enough because he created you. And I'd like to also share with you what it says on 1 Peter 2, 9. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. We are God's special possession, that ye shall show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. So, we tend to believe everything that we think up here. And some of us, when we're growing up as children, we've been listening to the lies um, or the false words of authorities or parents, older siblings or teachers, whatever it may be. And whatever words that we hear that was ingrained in our subconscious mind up until the age seven, it sticks with us. As we grow up as human beings, we're walking around thinking if somebody told you you're not worthy, you would never amount up to anything good, you're ugly, you're short, you're too this, you're too that, all these negative words, it is implanted and downloaded in our subconscious mind. So it's so hard to just cut that off, all that baggage of negativity and to move forward in our lives. But I hope in this video, I am here to remind you that you are a royal priesthood, a nation, God's own peculiar people, his beloved children. And did you know that as God, our Heavenly Father, King Most High, we are 
his prince and princesses. Let us put on that crown and place it on top of our head and remember who and whose you are. We have all of God's inheritance. Everything that is his, it is ours. We have his DNA. We have his, all of his characteristics. And sometimes some of us suppress some of our beauty that is already innately within us. All of his love, his light, and we can suppress it because we listen to the lies of whatever the world may tell us. But as believers, as children of God, I am just here to remind you, remember who and whose you are. You are God's heavenly father, a prince and a princess of the King Most High. And I'd like to share with you what C.S. Lewis says. He says, we are what we believe we are. And again, let us erase all of the negative programming when we're growing up, what people tell us, and proclaim who and whose you are today. We are righteous fight. And I'd like to share you what it says in Acts 13, 39. It says, everyone who is believing is declared righteous. Some of us may not feel very righteous today. We may think back of our past, no matter how old we are, that all of the past mistakes we have done and um, all the faults or harm that we may have caused other people, it may get in the way for us to move forward and believe that we are righteous fight in Christ. But I'd like to share with you what it says in Romans 8, 28. And it says, for God works all things together for good for those who love him who are called according to his purpose and I love what it says about the word purpose did you know the Greek word is prophesis prophesis and it's trans translated as the word purpose and it means show bread and showbread is setting forth of a thing, placing of it in view. The showbread or in display, like the 12 breads in front of a temple. It's a showbread. So when it says in Romans 8, 28, that God works all things together for good for those who love him, who are called according to his purpose, we are the showbread. Each and every one of us are in display, just like the temple is behind us, but we are in display. So who we are, we represent who Christ is in us. We represent his light, his love to others all around us. We are the examples. We are walking Bibles, let's say, or we, ex we are the expressions of Jesus to others. So let us not put out our light. Let, let, let us not let others or people blow out the candle that may be within you. I like what it says in um, the quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson. And he says, to believe your own thought, to believe that what is true for you in your private heart is true for all men. That is genius. So in other words, some of us, when we get so in, introspective within, we think we are the only ones going through certain struggles in life. We are the only ones that made certain terrible mistakes in our life. We think we're the only ones going through all the problems and difficulties of marriage, of raising children, of their jobs, or financial hardships, or major health problems. And we think we are the only ones and we cannot share it with others. But, it's, but the quote Ralph Waldo Emerson says is that, to, I will repeat again, to believe your own thought to believe that what is true for you in your private heart is true for all men. That means that it is common. All the experiences that we go in life is pretty common to everybody. That's why there's so many groups at certain places, you know, the um, AA groups or therapy groups or church group meetings because we can share common problems that we have 
amongst others so we can help and encourage one another. And I love what C.S. Lewis says. He says, experience is a brutal teacher, but you learn. My God, do you learn. And some of us that has gone through so many experiences in life, whether good or bad, I hope that you learned. We may have learned the hard way, but I hope that you are willing to be able to learn and grow and mature as an individual, as a child of Christ, and show forth and be used for God's purpose to be put out on display for others to see because we are the showbread representing God's light and His love and His sovereignty and His majesty that is within us to others. So I hope that something I said encourages your heart to just enjoy this one and only God-given life that has given to us. And do not let the enemy steal, kill, or to just destroy us, but to enjoy life to the full abundantly. And let us not have Jesus' death on the cross in vain, but to just proclaim, I will enjoy the rest of my life today and every day, and know that I am righteousified in Christ. Let us declare that today and just put on the crown of our head and proclaim we are the prince and princesses of our King Most High. So again, if somebody was to ask you a question, I wish somebody told me when I was in my younger days something, some kind of piece of advice. I wish I knew my personal identity, who and whose I was created for in Christ and that I can just be excited to learn and grow and evolve and just enjoy this abundant life in Christ. And I'd like to leave you with, my husband shared with me when we were first dating, I remember he would say a few romantic things and this was one of them. He says, in my heart of synagogue, a candle will always burn for you. And I pray that as Believers in Christ, your candle will always burn for God, our Heavenly Father, and to be His representative in display, a showbread for others to see, to be that warm light and spread His love to others. And do not allow nobody or no trying circumstances to blow out your candle but just keep on shining. I love God's creation and you, all of us are part of God's creation. And again, remember who and whose we are and God created for we were fearfully and wonderfully made in and through Christ. So I pray that all of you may just Remember who you are in Christ, and if you've forgotten and somehow lost yourself, I encourage you to just get back on your groove and to align yourself in Christ. And if there's any kind of blockage hindering your way, I pray that you, God's Spirit may pray for you, just groan for you and intercede in prayer on your behalf. So you may clear out the blockage and allow God's Spirit to freely like the floodgates, just freely his God's spirit may flow out in and through you so you may be able to walk in the path of righteousness today. God bless you and please take very good care. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.